that are live. I didn't have my text pulled up, so I'm just going to have to wing it. Um, uh, wing I'm David it. Dewald, Community Manager at Siena. Today is my third anniversary at Siena. Uh, each week, we bring a collection of community professionals together to discuss a topic suggested by our audience. If you would like to chat along with us today, you can do so on YouTube, LinkedIn, uh, where you can we can pull your questions in pretty easy and display them on screen and read them and everybody else can join in and doing so. If you just prefer to watch, uh, you can do so on Twitter. You can find links to all of that at the link above my head, cmgr.live. This week, we're talking about, we're going meta. We're going really meta. We're talking about communities for and by community managers. So <laughs> there we go. All right, we'll go around the horn and just let you introduce yourself. So. We'll start with Michelle. Tell us who you are, what you do, and where you do it. Ah, oh, hi everybody. This is my first, um, so I'm really pleased. It's it's seven o'clock here in London, and it's Friday, so I really should be either downstairs with my family or at a pub somewhere. Um, Michelle Goodall. And <laughs> Steph, oh, we, it's a bit early for you guys. I'm still still on my brew here. Well, I, I drink non-alcoholic, so <laughs> I, I have a beer. It's root based. <laughs> oh, very nice indeed. Um, I'm CMO at uh, Guild. Uh, we are based out of London, um, but we have a global suite of clients. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I don't think I probably need to say very much about Guild other than maybe we're a bit of a new player on the block. We're a really fantastic MVP community platform, mobile first. Um, we've really focused in professional networks, so lots of member associations, uh, organizations and professional communities, but that doesn't exclude other people as well. Um, we have communities for community professionals. That's been part of our, you know, sort of um, modus operandi from day one. So I'm happy to talk about them. Um, but I would say, whilst I am a marketer, I've always had a community background. So I've been doing community for 25 years plus, bulletin boards, Usenet, uh, doobie doo, virtual worlds, uh, through to social media, and now back to the world of community. So um, it's in my DNA. I've also been a lecturer in uh, community strategy at Manchester Metropolitan University uh, and the digital masters there. So um, I come at it from a kind of a, a business and a platform perspective, but also it's something that I love and I adore because I believe that we are better together. We're better as a collective entity, whatever that entity looks like. So I love community and I'm really, really happy to be back fully in it uh, full time as well. Rebecca. Uh, thank you, David. Michelle, that was such an inspiring introduction. Um, I think last so time I was like, Isn't it? Sorry, it was like, woo, woo, woo. Oh, it's it's I really, I mean that. Um, my name is Rebecca Marshburn. I am the head of Common Rooms Uncommon Community, which is a community for community and DevRel leaders um, who are, they can be, you know, from anywhere, any type of industry, but most often it's people who are in the technology and SaaS space who are building communities around products or maybe trying to incorporate a community of practice and product. Um, sometimes, you know, there's, there's a fine way to weave that needle and we ourselves are trying to do that. And I think we're learning alongside our community members what works, what doesn't work, when it won't work anymore, and then how to move through those transitions gracefully. So I really admire the work that Michelle and Ashley Friedland do at Guild. As a community leader, I'm also a part of the Guild community and I, I find a lot of uh, value there. Um, and same as like, you know, leaders like Rosie Sherry, who hosts their own communities for community leaders. And then um, Nikki Thibodeau, who has the community community. So there's a lot of ways that I think we can both teach and learn from each other. And it doesn't, um, and I think we all believe here, right? There's, it's not a zero sum game. It's like where the platform that serves you best at the time that might have the conversation going when you need it. And sometimes it'll, those will be across platforms and the more information we can share, the more expertise we can share, um, the better we're all going to do as community managers and leaders for our own members. So um, I'm really excited to be here because, for example, Venia is a community leader, but is also a community member of Uncommon and a huge contributor there. And I'm like, for example, a member of Guild. And so I think that there are probably ways that we can even discuss here what it means to be a member of one of those communities and a leader of those communities and get those like multi perspectives. Um, yeah. So uh, that's it. Okay. <laughs> Very good. Very good. Uh, Vinia, you're next. And, you know, I, I should tell you that I'm the guy that's in everybody's community, but I never talk. 
<laughs> so I, I mean, mean, I'm in, I'm in, you know, guild. I'm in, you know, Rebecca's uh, room, you know, common room. Uh, and then I'm in. Vinia has her own. She'll talk about that now. But uh, I'm in there. But I just don't talk. I'm just, I'm so silent and I observe and I listen. And we get it all every Friday from you, David. Yeah, is that what it is? I lay it all out. I, I literally, uh, you know, it's like, you know, sure, uh, ChatGPT is wonderful and OpenAI is great, but I steal all my d ideas from other community managers. <laughs> I just listen and watch what you do, and then I, you know, take it to ChatGPT and I say, rewrite this in in the way that sounds like me. And, <laughs> and then I'm on the show the saying, hey. Yeah. But that might be a little bit borderline. <laughs> yeah, was, no, I wouldn't do that at all. Um, yeah. Please, please go, Vinia. Tell us uh, who you are, what you do, and where you do it. Sure. Yeah. So my name is Samantha Venia Logan. I run a company called SociallyConstructed.Online. We're a community consultancy, so we help people build online communities, and then we turn around and use those communities as case studies to teach community managers the social science of online community. So that's what I do. And I do want to say, Michelle, this is my first time meeting you. And the moment you said that you teach community, it got my heart all a flutter. Um, I, I just love that. I love that it's going into academia. And I'm, I'm genuinely kind of hoping that we can get something like that going in my local area. Because I actually had to go all the way to New Zealand for my specialization. Um, so that's incredible. And I kind of want to poke your brain about that later. Mm -hmm. Yeah, fun. yeah. I mean, it, it's crazy. Before we came on, I was speaking to David and it's like, you know, 25 years, it still feels like, you know, a discipline that is still really young and, and it isn't, you know? Yeah, so, it's been yeah. around 80 yeah. years. I, well, it's exactly. And, you know, before you know, the tech side of it's only been around 30, so, so. <laughs> 30, 35. Yeah. I'll have to check but, the dates on when the well came online because that's like the first... Yeah. It, that's the internet based i mean there were other little communities so. yeah. yeah there was stuff in 1974 but right. you know i've created a timeline that might be right might not be right i mean just put Ooh, it you've got to share that with me because i'm like was, yeah. i'm slowly but surely oh. accidentally turning into like an, a historian of community management which <laughs> i love that i'm not it's um, not intentional though it's just that i'm it's I'm not one of just my Twitter and handle on everywhere. It is yeah, it's, the way I live. Like, honestly, <laughs> the Twitter handle has nothing to do with actual history. It came from oh, a okay. weird place. Oh, there we go. The, yeah. uh, the, the Network Society. There we go. It's incredible. You should read this for sure. And I kind of imagine like a more specific version of this book for community coming out of you, David. Like, oh. I think that would be absolutely fantastic. Oh, this is an incredible uh, series for those watching, by the way. It's called The Rise of the Network Society. It's a bit dry. It, it feels kind of bozier esque But Manuel Castells has like this four volume setup of like the entire history of the internet and it's absolutely phenomenal wow and please venia while we're here plug your community oh yeah so socially constructed dot online actually has a discord and uh we are actually changing and relaunching it uh to match year two for socially constructed's existence nice. and i'm super excited about it because it's also coming with a few community members who are in the process of building a uh, neurodiversity DEI channel, which uh, we're setting up right now and pretty hyped for it. It's not just for like mental health, but it's very much a how do neurodiverse community managers manage their daily structure, manage the relational communication, especially if they're like autistic or struggle in social circumstances. Um, and how do they manage that work-life balance when they're working with neurodiverse people? And finally, but not last, but definitely not least, Tim McDonald. Oh, that's me. Um, <laughs> I was just so immersed in whatever you say it. Um, Tim McDonald, I am the head of community at homeroom.club, um, where we help. Uh, we don't, well, we do have our own platform, but we really work on with clients on their community strategy, helping combine platforms, build a platform, or integrate platforms together for their needs after we learn what they're trying to do with their community, you know, want to do with their community. And um, I'm the co-host here with David, but as we were talking, I'm like, you know, uh, I, this topic is what I used to do every Friday myself was community manager hangout, which was uh, by community managers 
for community managers, you know, <laughs> and that's what, it, that's how it started. And that's what it was the whole time. We just, we didn't have a place to go to learn. So we would just ask questions and then answer them and then learn from each other. And that's what we did every Friday. And that turned into a blog and more and got me back here with you, David. <laughs> <laughs> yep, and I, I just got to say the history of community management. I've been using this in my slides when I first talk about what community is and what it isn't. I remind everybody that community management has been around for ages. And my first example that I have of a community manager is ancient village tribes where you would always visit the chief or the medical, you know, doctor, the witch doctor. Um, that was my first slide. The second slide was back like in the late 1700s, at least in the U S when we were in head towns and everybody would ride up in their horses. And there usually was a pub, a bank, you know, a hotel, wherever, you know, the, the horse and tack. And the guy sitting on the front stoop of that building when somebody came into town was the one who knew everything that was going on in the town and suggest what hotel, where to get a drink, who to talk to, if he wanted to get a little horror for the night or whatever, you know, I mean, you know, that was that was the person that knew everything that was going on and could give you the lowdown. And that was a community manager back in those days. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Very good. Hey, Jenny Weigel out there is joining us just for uh, hey, know, just temporarily. Uh, let's see. I'll pop this up here from Jennifer. Um, she says, loves what you said, Venia. Uh, just now using the communities as a case study to teach new community managers. Brilliant idea. Yeah. If you, if you want to go deep on the science, Vinny is the one to talk to. Yeah. She'll take you in a deep dive on social communities. Vinia, and I, when we met in person, I think I had said that you are the, did I call you? Oh no. The community professor is what I had called you. <laughs> uh, yeah. I think there's been a, uh, it's kind of funny because on LinkedIn, there's been a little bit of a battle going on between um, community professor, which you and Lori definitely like, and then community scientist. And I've just kind of been hanging out on the sidelines because it's a nickname and that's for the community, community to do. Professor. See, you know, just bridge the gap. You're the professor of community science. Yeah. 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 <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's how you solve it. Just, take it all work it together yeah just, all right so yeah, compound, yeah. Compound. yeah um so let's 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 just first get out of the way mention a lot of the uh communities that we know of obviously rebecca mentioned some uh rosie sherry and they each you know michelle has her guild and you know common room has theirs uh some of the other ones are cmx hub um i i did invite them to come along today unfortunately uh we couldn't coordinate a, a person to show um, there's community roundtable. They have their own communities on Facebook. A lot of them are on Facebook, um, which is where everybody is, it seems. Um, so we'll get those out of the way. There's definitely out there that you can go. And I think that the beauty of community managers is that um, you could be in the, in the industry, you could be my direct competitor. But if the community manager came to me and said, I'm struggling here, I would help them. And I think that that is true of every single community manager out there. We are so understanding and connected to what we do that we will help you, even if it's, you know, maybe not in our best interest too. Because we all, I think, agree that, you know, if we raise everybody up, it just raises everybody up. You know, it, it, it makes it the best of us come out. Um, so to that end, um, since many of you have your own communities and are running them uh, for your customers and users. Uh, what do you think are some of the good and best practices maybe of running a community for community managers? We're, we're kind of a, a smart crowd about what we do. Um, for the most part, I think that, you know, there's obviously a scale, there's new people and there's people like Michelle and I who have been doing it since the dawn of the internet. Um, <laughs> you know, uh, but I just kind of want to understand what you think and maybe, you know, how, how is it different from maybe another community of community professionals? Because you're really, you know, we talked about this, Michelle and I, it's meta, your community for community managers. How do you make that interesting and exciting? And I won't say successful because it's hard not to be successful because community managers like to help. Um, but just what are your thoughts on, on getting the most out of that weird niche of 
you know, eating, drinking the Kool-Aid, basically. You're, you're building a community about what you do and how you do it. I said a lot. Did I say too much? Where's the question? Right? Repeat the question, please. <laughs> I should be a politician here and just pick the question that I want. Um, yeah, can, absolutely do that. You know, yeah, yeah. Can I, can I say what you asked. Here's my talking point. <laughs> exactly. No, what, what I was going to say is I don't think it's any different to any other community. You know, the, the reality is community managers are exactly the same as other community members. They are pressed for time. They will want to be in the community if they need something or they feel that they have something to give. Um, they will have different modes. They're busy people, crazy busy people. But then also, you know, other communities are like that as well. I, I genuinely don't feel that it's any different. I think maybe what you kind of pinpointed earlier is that as a a discipline i think we are naturally kind of hardwired to help other people i think we're naturally hardwired to be people people and it was interesting what Vinny was saying about um neurodivergence because actually we've got quite a few of those communities on guild and what i would say is that i'm seeing and and drawing from those communities people who um wouldn't have thought themselves good or likely candidates for being community managers or community professionals and actually they are knocking it out of the park they're fabulous so i think you know, i'm not really giving you an answer there other than i don't think it's any different to any other community um, i'll be frank um, but, but there are things that i think work for community professionals and things that don't so maybe i'll stop there and allow somebody else to say some things and i'll come back yeah, I kind of want to jump off of that because um, I feel like in many ways, I agree with you. They are no different than any other community. But I think that there are two primary differences uh, that I have noticed between the communities that I work with on consulting purposes and the community that I built for community managers. Uh, the first one is less is more and community managers totally recognize that where managing the engagement and the content for um, B to C communities versus a community management community, they want things to be quieter because they're really looking for that high value. They're so disparate and all over the place right now and community managers are expected to manage like 30 different hats. So having a very specific and very exclusive content stream where they can go to solve those specific problems and also doing so with the expectation that it will always be just small drips of high quality content is very important um, for the community managers that I've noticed. And I think it's more so than other communities. Um, and the second difference that I've noticed is that the average day of a community manager is constantly task oriented. So they're expected to go do a whole bunch of things and the relational aspects of their jobs are always give, 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 give in their communities. So when you have a community where they can come to take relational communication, talk to other people, be emotionally vulnerable, um, those kinds of communities for community managers tend to largely lead to um, better, more healthy community builders as a whole. And I think that we have to be a bastion as community spaces for community managers for them to kind of let go of their work and choose to make this a learning environment, a relational environment, a place to disclose and to connect. I don't think that that second part is special for all communities, which is why overall I agree with Michelle. But I do think that we have to make a more concerted effort to be highly relational instead of task oriented in these communities. So can I pick something up on that? I think because I get to see a very broad um, spectrum of professional communities. I mean, I think we ho host 6,000 plus, plus, plus professional communities, communities of practice. Um, and I'm in some for marketers and communications professionals. I would say it's no different what you've just said there. So, so maybe it is about people who are in some form of communications type role or marcom's role or, or you know what we do then for those particular audiences this is 
absolutely true. You know, less is more. And as you say, the ability to be able to be vulnerable. And also, in some instances, I'm in communities with CMOs. No CMO wants to ever say that they're struggling or they're vulnerable or to not have the answers. Actually, in really good, healthy communities of CMOs, that is exactly what happens in the mode as well. Yeah. So, so a reflection uh, that was a, fr a reflection across professional communities and you know obviously that's our kind of main space yeah then, oh sorry you go um i i can say that um speaking with a history of being a marketer as well i did marketing for like 10 years um the digital marketer engaged community is very similar to that as well where that relational disclosure is the number one thing that they accomplish so i would definitely agree with that um, I was just going to say, I am not surprised, but still impressed at how well articulated those two primary buckets were that you talked about, Venya. Um, and I think both what you and Michelle were sort of touching on is something that I worry about all the time as a, as a community leader is that um, relationships between breadth and depth. And I think when we think about, let's say, engagement numbers, part of me is like, well, I should see uh, breadth of engagement, like it happening all the time. You know, like if someone's not always asking a question and answering a question, then does that mean the community is no longer valuable or functioning? And really, I think as community managers, as a part of these communities, sometimes it's like, no, the, the breadth is not as important as the depth. So it's not like a lot. It's not like a, it, it takes a while to craft a very deep question and then a while to craft a very deep answer. And so instead of I think as community managers, instead of necessarily hoping that we're going to ask and receive like a very like you know surface level question and answer the the value of that engagement is really coming from the depth of those questions that we get to ask and the depth that we receive very good i think, I, think my I was just going to throw in one thing too is well two things one is i think with and and it's kind of been touched on but you know in communities for other community managers more so than just about any other community, and it's almost across the board in almost all these communities, is you have the chance to kind of cheer people on, I guess is the best way to say it, you know, like lift them up. And in a lot of other communities, that's frowned upon because that's not the purpose of the community. Like if it's a support community, you're not, you might be able to lift an idea up, but you're not lifting a person up. And I think that that communities of community managers, that's a one place where we get to lift each other up not just as people, but also our work that we put out there. And I think the other element too, is that I think since we all practice community, regardless of our experience or what type of community we're in, we all have a basic understanding of the structure of communities. And so you don't get nearly the amount of support questions in a community of community managers about the platform, about the community that you do in other communities where people have maybe a half to a, a, a tenth of your, your engagement is all people like asking, where do I find this? How do I get there? Where community managers, they know because it's laid out by another community manager. They know the channel structure. They know what kind of topics they're su supposed to discuss where. They know where to where to post things, where to do. It's very rare that you get the question, where can I go to find this? Or where should I post this? Because we all understand the architecture of how communities are set up. Yeah, I think I find that in all of the communities that I'm a part of, that it's always there's, there's rarely questions of how I do something on a, on a, on a platform. I mean, almost never, um, when it's for community management. Now, if I'm on a platform in their community space, it's usually technical support stuff that's not really talking about how they do is how you can manage this community platform. Um, but, uh, yeah. And, and it's always more about, I'm trying to do, this in my community, what's the best way to do it? Uh, those kinds of questions. It's it's more of a high level. It's not like functionality questions. It's like, uh, what's a good word to use here? Effort, you know, how do I bring the product marketing team in? How do I bring the product team in? How do I get the CEO to understand those kinds of things? So, um, yeah, uh, I do have a great question in here from Jenny Weigel, who's trying to stir the pot. Um, I'll bring it up. She Love says, or she, she asks, are there too many communities for community managers today? Discuss. Ha ha. 
Ooh. Ooh. Okay. <laughs> um, as somebody who's a part of a bazillion communities um, and who dabbles on Reddit, which is uh, even more communities, um, oh, I can never get enough. I love this stuff. I mean, that's why I've been doing it for this long. I love communities. I love seeing how communities operate. Um, I have on occasion been known to create communities because I was a interested in the topic, but I didn't like the way the community was being run. <laughs> so I'm guilty of creating another community in spite of the fact that there's an existing community for the same thing. Um, I think Jenny so, might be doing that with a couple other people too about meetups. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> there's that. Um, yeah, I don't think you can ever, and, and the thing is, is that um, it's really, for, for community managers, everybody has a, a preferred way of interacting, right? So, like, everybody feels like everybody's on Facebook. You know, that's the thing. Whenever I hear somebody's like, well, they're all on Facebook, I should build it there, right? Um, and, yeah, they're all there. The problem is, is that they're all there for not you. They're there for their friends, their family, their everybody else. And you're just one blip in the stream, you know, for them. So is it the best place? I don't know. But <laughs> you and I are compulsive joiners. I got to share that. Yes. Uh, it says, you and I, I are compulsive joiners yeah. and I'm going to apologize for it. I'm not. I love it. Um, <laughs> and because there's so many different audiences and they interact in the way that they want, they're going to use the platform they're most comfortable and familiar with and, and can clean up. Um, yeah. Linda Brass. Jumps can in I, here. Can I answer Jenny's question? Yeah, Actually, I'm sorry, I'm like rambling. To, yeah, <clears throat> I'd like to answer it because, um, you know, three, four years ago, we did an audit and, you know, we asked ourselves the question, as any good community strategist would, do the communities exist already and what are they like? And actually the answer were, yeah, there were quite a few communities, but it was so US centric, very US centric. So we thought, well, yeah, why not? Let's create. And in fact, we've got two communities for community professionals. Um, if you looked at any other discipline, if you looked at comms, even corporate comms, you know, as a very distinct discipline or investor relations or whatever, you would find, you know, 50, 60, 200 communities out there for those um, people. So my answer really simply is we did that audit and we looked at all of the various communities and some were highly established. Some um, obviously people like Vanessa Paik has been running Australian community managers for many years as well. There's some great, great, you know, communities out there. But actually, I'm not going to hang out with a bunch of Australian community managers because the time zone is wrong. And, you know, equally, I don't think it necessarily is about platform. Um, um, Samantha, I, the, the idea of hanging out on Discord for any longer than I need to brings me out in hives. So, you know, I would feel uncomfortable there um, because, you know, that's just not a place and a space for me. So I think very simply in answer, I don't think you were stirring the pot. I think it's a really, really good question. Are there too many communities for community managers? No. Uh, you know, I pop up in Common Room occasionally. Uh, we're not clients of common room uh, just yet maybe in the future and so maybe i'll have a different mode there but but i actually think you can get so many different things from different communities and you know as we would advise any industry and sector do your kind of audit and then figure out where you want to be because you know it may change as as you you know change your career or get into ops or get into strategy or you know have the challenges that you were talking about david in terms of integration within an organization maybe there are different places uh, for you at any given time. So no, quite firmly, there aren't enough. I'd welcome more, to be honest with you. Yeah. I, think, uh, oh, I was just going to say, you know, one of my predictions for this year was that we were going to see small, more smaller niche communities, right? And I think what we've experienced over most of our lifetimes is this industry and world that we live in where bigger is better. And if you live in the Florida area and you know a certain attorney that's their commercials bigger is better but uh <laughs> but I think that we are starting to see that bigger is not always better sometimes there we're missing something that we want out of something that is so niche that that bigger one is not addressing and so as David mentioned sometimes he doesn't like ways that certain communities are run and starts his own. And I think that's what we're starting to see is these people with these passions that aren't getting it from these bigger communities are starting up their own communities. And they're very focused on a particular industry, a specific angle, a, you know, specific audience that they're trying to reach. I mean, you know, if I look at it, 
you know, almost every community right now that I'm aware of, I mean, for community managers is focused on other community managers, right? And how do we advance this industry into a higher role? We have to start aiming higher than where we're at currently. Where is that? It's in the C-suite. How do we get to the C-suite? We start having communities with people in the C-suite. We don't have them with other community managers. And so there is a whole opportunity here for plenty of people to take advantage and kind of create these niche communities. There can never be too many. There can be too many of one thing, but there can never be too many in general. Yeah. I, uh, I am struck when I ask, when I hear this question, um, I think it's an SEO quote that says, there's a large but finite amount of topics in all of the world. Where it gets complicated is that there is an infinite number of perspectives. And I think that when we're building communities around those various perspectives, uh, when you look at the job of a community manager, uh, the job of a community manager is to build a culture within an enclosed space where people feel like they have a sense of belonging that comes from shared experience, shared practice, and shared artifacts of that engagement. I think that you can create a mission that is all your own, that other people can share and wear. That's the point of a community-based magnetic brand. And once you build that brand, once you say, this is my identity, are you willing to wear that armor with me and go out and build? You have now created for yourself a culture that is infinite because it's a composed of different perspectives, practices, and experiences. If that's really what we're building, I don't really see how there can be a limitation in that. Who knew that? <laughs> so wise i'm uh, telling you she brings yeah. the science <laughs> i would say i think uh, to jenny's question there are certainly a lot i mean we've all decided like there's certainly a lot but i also agree that it wouldn't be too many and i think to build on what venia was just saying is that i think you almost know immediately when you enter a community whether or not this is the one that is going to serve you and that you can serve um, at this time in your career or your life or your journey or profession or personally, whichever type of community you're joining. And maybe a different community is a better fit at different points in that journey. Um, but I think there's not too many because there's enough or more created when certain people are looking for a, a perspective that they can try on and wear at that time in their journey. And usually I think as community managers, like that's one of our core goals, right, is to say, how do we make sure to connect at that moment of welcome so this person can make an informed decision? Is this a community I want to spend my time in um, versus is it not? Um, and so I think I think it's so much of that comes from those those first initial interactions. You know, did they ask a question and it was answered with depth or care or kindness or was it not answered at all? Did they receive a welcome? Do they know who to go to if they have a question or if something happens that doesn't feel right in the community or that feels amazing. Like, do they understand how to navigate through those channels and where they want to go and find the information they need? Do they understand what is okay and how it's okay to participate? Um, and so I think, yeah, it's actually comes pretty, pretty quickly where you're like, yes, this community is like going to suit me at this time or not today, maybe not tomorrow, maybe next week. I agree. That was a mic drop. I mean, I, you know, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, boom, the silence. Yeah. So I hope that we managed to navigate that supposed minefield of Jenny's. <laughs> <laughs> he was having fun. Uh, that's yeah. all good. No, I think that's it. Um, you know, I've seen, I have seen the, the, you know, what Tim and, and everybody's kind of talking about is these niche communities popping up. And the way that I've seen it happen is, um, I, I don't, I, I don't want to say a cult of personality because it's not quite that, but I've seen like, and I don't want to use the term guru because I got hand slapped for using the word guru, but it's communities that are built around personalities, whether that personality is, um, a teacher or, uh, you know, I, I use Vanessa Paik. I mean, she has a community of community managers, um, 
you know, uh, Rosie Sherry, community of community managers, but they're around them. Um, and that's not a bad thing. It's just they're they're very knowledgeable and they share, but they built a community around their brand, so to speak. But it's really about their personality and how they react and create. And I think those things are good, too. I mean, here I am on this show building a small community around the show. Um, so, I, you know, I, I'm, I'm kind of part of the problem or part of the solution, if you, if you look at it that way. Um, so, you know, those kinds of niche communities, I think we're going to see more of, um, and they're going to be all over the place and you're going to have to go to where they are. Um, you know, I'm not a big fan of chat based communities, you know, slacks and, and discord, but that's cause you know, I did IRC 20 years ago <laughs> and I moved on, you know, kind of thing. Um, but, uh, it's just, that's just the way I am. So you can find me more on forum based communities and that kind of thing. And I'll tend to answer more often on Facebook than anywhere. Um, but, uh, that's just me, you know, um, and being able to see it in the moment and respond to it in the moment. And, well, and yeah. it's pretty interesting. I think that as we're talking about communities of communities and to this question in particular, nobody's brought up like the whole web three space. Right. And right. I know several communities that are just geared around training people in community management for web three. I know groups and well, if we want to call them communities being formed around Web3. And so it's like, you know, if we look at every and I'm just throwing those out as an example, because when we talk about these niches, it's like there's a whole like sphere of industry, right, of knowledge that's just coming into age right now. Imagine all the offsprings that that's going to have in the future, even though none of us might be there currently. Right. There is a yeah. group passionate the early adopters and the and the first you know testers and everything they're there already we haven't made it mainstream with web3 but once it makes it mainstream which i firmly believe we will maybe not in the direction that people are showing us we're going to see a whole offspring of different niches that come out of that yeah. and we're just talking about what we have currently today that's why i think for this question it's like it's never going to change. The answer is never going to change because we are going to continue to see new offsprings of information that people are hungry to learn about. Yeah, I agree. I think that, uh, I think you're right in that Web3 is currently the driver of new developments in community. I don't want to say platform specifically, but certainly a driver in new directions for community management. Um, I kind of disagree that Web3 will be everywhere. I think that it'll find its place and it'll be another tool in the bucket. But uh, I don't know that it's going to take over. Uh, yeah. But I, right now, it is the it is a driving factor in growth because people are willing to dump money in it if it says Web3 on it. Yeah, you know? I, um, I, I'm going to be publishing later on this month a video on the three cultures of Web3. But um, one of the big things that I want to say about Web3 is that um, there are many areas where it is basically just reinventing a wheel. And a lot of those aspects of Web3 are just going to get folded back in. Yep. And I think that that's a good thing. But the impact and the advantage to Web3 that I am seeing is the difference between a culture and the context, wherein a culture is a context in any given day. Here's what our space looks like. Here's how people are interacting. Here's the rules by which people are living. And culture is built in a context over time. And at a certain point in time, and I think Web3 is doing this, you have to dispose of some of those very old uh, restrictions that were developed as a part of culture. As we start to build, there's this aspect of, okay, we need to clean up. We need to look toward the future. If we want to be innovative, we're going to have to clash with the notion of tradition. And I think that Web3 is doing exactly that. They are moving forward into an innovative space by dispensing with some aspects of tradition. And inevitably, we are going to see a whole bunch of new coming out of Web3, but it's not like they're throwing out the baby with the bathwater. They are going to bring in those notions of tradition eventually. And mm -hmm. I think that Web3 will have created a completely new innovative space that will be able to nicely fold into community as we currently know it. I think yeah. that's the big advantage to Web3. I think the, the way that I could articulate that simply is that you're not a Web3 community manager. You're a community manager that works in Web3. Yes. 
Oh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. That's all I'm saying. You're a community manager. Own it. Embrace <laughs> it. Love it. You work in Web3. That's that's how I would say it. You know, that's that's all I'm saying. So, and I'm excited to see what happens because, I, like I said, because there's so much uh, here, they are going to drive this in. Linda Carlson comes back in and says, agreed. Some definitions of Web3 is an artificial construct, but it is evolving new ways of looking at old challenges. I love your comments on this. I do need a copy of the stream to share to my colleagues. Uh, it's on YouTube, uh, youtube.com slash at uh, C-M-G-R-L-I-V-E. Um, or you can look us up for Community Manager Live on YouTube. It should pull up. Um, and uh, yeah, it's there. <laughs> so. And you need to stop being a lurker in our communities and post this stuff as well. You know, we've talked about uh, I know. Just post away. You're I out. hate to be that guy, though. You're not that guy. <laughs> We were I know I'm not that guy. That's the point. <laughs> Try not to be that guy. <laughs> you know, um, yeah, uh, yeah. We're always available. Uh, uh, just so you know, uh, Linda, we also take the audio out, and um, it, it's uh, we put it into a podcast, and basically it's just raw audio. So what you see, what you hear here, because you can't see it on an audio, um, is the same thing that you'll get on the podcast. Uh, and you can find that everywhere. That's that was easy to distribute. So it's on Apple, it's on Stitcher, it's on uh, what's that other one? Big one, Spotify, maybe. Yeah, I think that's what they call it, Spotify. Um, it's on podcast. those. Yeah. So and it's it's Community Manager Live on there as well. And uh, yeah, so that's a that's another way to get it to them if they don't actually have time to sit in front of a screen. Um, I try to read all the comments as well, so that you know you, you can't see them if I. You know, I put them on screen, but you know, if you're listening in, you can't see them. So, but thank you, thank you, uh, Linda. We appreciate it. Thank you. She said, "Gotcha." <laughs> you really does read all the questions. I do. <laughs> not, not all of them. Some of them are, you know, if you want to call, say something snarky at me just to be funny, you can do that. I won't necessarily. If it's funny, I might put it on screen. But uh, yeah, so, so that's good. All right. Um, where do we want to go with this discussion? I think I think that that's good. Web three is going to bring changes. Um, I'm looking forward to those. I want to see what those are. I'm I'm always looking for the evolution of community. I think that, you know, earlier to Michelle's point, I think that it does feel like we're just getting uh, a handle on it, of what community management is and what it should be. Um, I think that we're getting to the point where we're starting to see specialized roles in community management. So I see, I don't want to say community management. I said this in our, our earlier in the year, I said, I think we should move away from, yeah, community professional instead of community manager, because manager is one role of community professional. It could be that you're a builder. It could be your strategist. You could be all kinds of things to still be. Yeah. It's a community profession. We're turning it into a profession rather than a role. And that's, yeah. that's my goal for the year is like, Let's stop saying community manager for everything, which is going to. I think it still has a place. Exactly. You can get CMGR .pro. There you go. <laughs> Crap. Yeah. Now I got to go register it. So somebody who's not listening. Slow again, aren't we? Um, All right. Uh, that's that's, that's something that we have, you know, we debate constantly because actually there's no proper lexicon for this as well. Community builder, community manager, community leader, community professional, community strategist. I prefer strategists. And then, you know, then we've got community ops. We've got community data analysts. We've got, you know, internal communicators, champions, all of these different roles. So actually, if you were looking at any other profession, they would have codified this and said, you know, this is what this structure looks like. And, you know, if you're a community professional of one doing everything, well, then you know, you've got an opportunity to go and say, look how much I do. <laughs> look how much I know. Look how much I impact as well. I also Michelle, think. Oh, you go, Venia. Oh, I, I also think that there's another aspect here in that the people who are involved in our communities are also taking a place in building that community. And to recognize that role, I think, is very, very critical and important. Uh, so for me, I've kind of made a difference between being a community builder of any ilk, of any form. I think that that's a good catch-all catch -all term. And then there's a community management department that is involved in making explicit rules, settings, uh, and cultural boundaries. 
And then within that Department of Community Management, you have people that do specific operations for that community. So like borrow Tiffany Oda's term of community operations. You have the community architect responsible for designing the space for people to interact. You have the community engagement professionals, like the community facilitator and the moderator. Um, and I think that in a lot of ways, just by calling it a community of community builders, you are recognizing people's actions regardless of whether or not they're being paid or whether or not they're connected to a specific vendor in that community. And then you're also saying this is a department of community management composed of community specialists. Yeah, I think so the the show, Michelle, you were talking about and Tim as well, like uh, how community man community building has been a profession as old as time right tim you're talking about like when we use clay tablets essentially and michelle you're like i've been in here you know for 30 years in this space um and i think the the change that's happening is that the shared vocabulary that community builders had internally what we're finally seeing is a shift of that shared vocabulary being externalized where other people and organizations start to understand the impact of community building, community management, community strategy. And I think, David, you had mentioned this, right? Like you, you want it to be in the C-suite. And I think it's not until now where this proliferation, hopefully not too many, but like just enough in the right amount of perspectives of communities for community leaders ends up creating that shared vocabulary that we then externalize so that we, so that people in the C-suite understand because we're all using the same language and we're all being able to show the impact of community. And until we're able to generally agree on what that shared vocabulary is, we're not going to be able to externalize it in a way that feels like it, that feels like it answers all of those C-suite questions. And I think that's where we're moving towards in terms of um, community leaders or community builders be for inside of community management or wow, inside of community communities so meta because now that we're in those spaces together we're like we're able to take that shared vocabulary and really externalize it so other people can finally understand what we have been doing for the past 30 years yeah or well, there's gonna have to be a coming together though i mean maybe maybe that's the call to action for the community builders of community for community uh, blah. <laughs> It's hard. It gets hard. Yeah. So, so maybe that's the call to action. We're gonna run that and try it again. So, the call to action is is that maybe we go to these communities of community builders, and maybe the owners of them can do this as well, and say let's let's start the discussion of what that lexicon should be. You know, is it is it the the we'll be done tomorrow. Yeah, Michelle, right on it. Blaze, if you're listening in, I'm sorry. Um, yeah. <laughs> so. Um, yeah, uh, and and Vinia's point: Do we do we use the the terminology that you know Vinia supplied? We have a she you know listed far more roles than I would have thought of, uh, which is awesome because you know I, I I'm very simple guy you know just, you know there's strategists there's builders there you know engagement that I didn't even think about that but yeah that's one that should probably be in there as well um, and you know and and take that and say let's let's talk about this let's let's codify this and then it'll take some outreach to go from community to community community and me and i guess jenny weigel who join every community can be that bridge to help carry that from community to community to say that oh i like that but um on the other community they kind of have it this way what do you think about that um and then just spread that around and maybe that's that's the goal for community management so um, I've, community I've got a point I want to interject here. Oh. A community, the community profession is one of the only communities that doesn't have, or professions that doesn't have a trade association, one of those traditional things. And so, it's the same with search marketing. It's the same with digital marketing. And what we've seen over the last 15 years or so is associations and organisations that become proxies for these associations. So the Community Leader Institute tried it. Um, it's now been bought by can't remember but it's a an, an agency um, we still don't have that association that professional association in the uk we didn't have a professional association of of kind of digital marketing the founder of e-consult a uh, uh, guild founded e-consultancy which was again a proxy for a, an association for digital marketers that was a business built on community so you know we we don't have the time the resources or uh, we do have the expertise to be able to do this, to build that professional association.
But I tell you what, it's really, really hard. So what you're saying is do we do it from the ground upwards and then people like guilds just provide the, the vessels and the space to be able to, to do this. But ultimately, who makes the decision around, you know, actually, as you say, the lexicon uh, of, yeah. of our community? Because actually what I would say is, is every time I'm having these conversations, Again, it's the US kind of lens that you have these huge teams of, of community professionals in Europe, in the UK. Generally, it's one or two people within an organization. The idea that somebody in a community role would be on the C-suite, that ain't going to happen because you've got the CMO. Mm -hmm. Very infrequently do you have somebody in a communications role or even in a customer experience role who is mm -hmm. part of the C-suite. They might be part of the leadership team, but never part of the C-suite. So I yeah. think this is great ambition. Yes, yes, yes. The realities of what we're trying to do here, you know, it might be 20, 30 years before that happens. And, yeah, and, and, and that was the, the context that I put it into. I'd love to see it, but I don't think it's going to happen anytime soon for well, a C-suite. Well, I also think in the meantime, let's, let's, you know, have some but, agreement around what these different yeah. roles are. In uh, Rebecca, I'll, I'll let you in. I, I just want to add... Um, it was oddly enough, or maybe funnily enough, my wife and I were talking about it this morning um, at breakfast. And I was saying, we don't have an association for community people. And I was like, here, look, marketing association, tons of them. You know, there's two or three you can choose from, yeah. you know. Um, AMA, CIM, Marketing yeah. Society. Yeah, I mean, we, yeah. we don't have that. And it's, she's like, well, you should do it. And I'm like, I wouldn't even know where to begin because it is a huge yeah. undertaking, right? Um, you know, wow. and it, but Rebecca, Rebecca jump in. I'm sorry, Vinny, I'm going to cut you off. Let Rebecca jump in with what she said because I totally derailed her. No, thank you, David. Uh, so I, I also, I was just going to follow up on what Michelle was saying is that I think, or what we're all saying is like, absolutely, we need to, a great call to action is that we uh, come together and like agree on these vocabulary and lexicon, but we also, I think, have to agree not just like what do we call ourselves and how do we, you know, measure our success and what does our team structure look like, but we have to agree on a lexicon about how other people in the organization, assuming I'm coming from a product based like type of community, how like how we impact them, because until we can build bridges with other folks in the organization about how our work impacts their success, then no matter how many things that we agree on internally, it's still not going to be externalized. So I think it's like, listen, if we want to help sales understand that community is integral to the success of them during their jobs, then we need to create shared vocabulary around if you're looking for qualified leads, Right now, you're un you understand a marketing qualified lead, but what does it mean to be a community qualified lead? Because this person is already opting in to wanting to understand more about your industry, your space, your product. If you're looking at product and engineering teams, and they're like, "Hey, cool community, cool, 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 sounds nice," but what you're saying is like, you want to know when there's like bugs and issues. You want to know when there's feature requests. You want to know exactly the sentiment around what you just launched in your product. That we need to create a shared. Um, lexicon around how what we do in community directly impacts that. So when we're talking to these, I don't want to say satellite teams, but you know, adjacent teams in our organization, they're like, oh, the vocabulary that you gave us is also the word that I now understand that community is infused into my success. Agreed. And I also feel like there's another aspect here because it's not just the community field that is revolutionizing the sense of associative work. Um, because like it was only just very recently in the past three or four years that we started to see unionizing coming up specifically for virtual work uh, among marketers and other contractors, web designers, software developers, because a large majority of companies are offloading a huge amount of employee um, expense over to contract work, those contractors aren't receiving a large majority of their rights. So there are a large majority of these unionized associative um, developments that are happening, but they're all happening in silos. And if we don't look at our roles in our connections as community members within the context of that overall movement, I think that we could very, very easily lose the thread on what it really means for us as a collective virtual world to establish the rights and expectations for the workers in that world.
we got all jazzed up about this one. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, it's good. It's I mean, because but I work with quite a lot of a lot of trade unions, and actually, for them, moving towards digital and virtual communities, it, it's been quite quite mind blowing for them. Um, you know, that idea of collective action through virtual spaces is is transformative and you know certainly I think you can see in the UK at the moment there's lots of strike and it probably doesn't make your news but teachers are on strike paramedics are on strike everybody is kind of striking it's like being in France at the moment um <laughs> but, but, <laughs> if you want to take a day off I, I had heard about the teachers being yeah, on strike yeah, it's, so it's I'm, going not, to... I'm not oblivious to what's going on <laughs> across the pond but, uh, but the, the point here is is that I think associations trade associations etc they they kind of do that unions think much more in a web three collective cooperative kind of way which is you know maybe you've got two not diametrically opposed kind of forces here but but maybe there's something in the middle i don't know you've, you've got me thinking and uh yeah okay mm -hmm. well, all, all i gotta say I know we're is call me call me if anybody is thinking of doing one of these things, don't wait for somebody else to create it. Go create it yourself right now. It doesn't matter if you have experience, the knowledge, just yeah. get your feet wet, dust up your knees and do it. Um, <laughs> and if well, you run into competition, remember there is such a thing as co Yeah, and it is okay to be calm partners. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. I've, I've said that for a long time, you know, just because I have a community about one thing and you have a community about that same thing doesn't mean we're in competition. Absolutely not. Because I can lift you up, you can lift me up and we'll both succeed. And there's like, so. there's like a real thing of cross posting where it's like sometimes you didn't see in one community, but you saw it in another and it actually is nice because the whole goal is that people come to attend your event to learn or come read what you produce. Like it's, the All goal. right, fine. I'll start power spamming. <laughs> yeah, you know, the goal is to empower people with knowledge and you know, like where they're right. going to access that. Hopefully, no one becomes that guy or that that person. Uh, but if you, I think it is, you know, hopefully, yeah. thoughtfully, okay to like cross post. Like, hey, you might not have seen it over here, but I want to make sure you know this is happening. If this is where you happen to be this week. Yeah. All right, we're at the top of the hour. So what we'll go around and do is just reintroduce yourselves uh tell people where they can connect with you if they if you if they would like to to get to know more about your community of community managers plug that as well uh we'll go back kind of the same way we did i'll go to michelle first and we'll move around thank you very much i'll keep this one quick then so michelle cmo of guild uh we have two communities uh that are public and discoverable non-invite only for community managers the first one is professional community leaders uh, and the second one is the Guild Community Collective. Ashley Friedland, the uh, founder of Guild, hosts professional community leaders. And Blaise Grimes Viort, who always sounds like a supervillain, but is one of the nicest people that I think I've ever met in my life, uh, hosts Guild Community Collective. Uh, you can find me on both of those communities and many more. Um, I'm Green Wellies on Twitter. Uh, connect with me anywhere you want to. And also please connect with me on Guild. Um. I'll just do a plug. I'm a big fan of Guild and both Ashley and Blaze Grimes of Uh and you, Michelle. So thank you for what you do. Um, I, I am Rebecca Marshburn. I am the head of Common Room's Uncommon Community. Um, Common Room is an intelligent community growth platform to help you manage, scale, build, grow your communities. And so we use our own product to help build, us build our community as well and help manage and understand what's happening in it and what we need to do and how to serve our members better. Um, you can find me in the Uncommon community. Um, we have a Slack, and we're also, of course, Twitter, LinkedIn, YouTube, those sorts of things. Or you can find me directly at Becca Odley on Twitter and on LinkedIn. Vinia? Uh, yeah, so my name is Samantha Venia Logan. I do go by Venia, and I run a company called sociallyconstructed.online. It does have a Discord community. Uh, if you just go to scms.me slash Discord, uh, you'll be able to find us. Uh, but in lieu of any further statement, I also would like to invite you, and I posted it in the YouTube Discord, a community unconference being run by James Cattell, Jill Nicholson, yeah. and myself. Um, so please come talk about this. And maybe if you have a big opinion about what we discussed today, you could run a full topic on it. 
Oh man, this is like throwback day for me. I used to run community manager on conference just back over a decade ago. <laughs> um, nice. Logos, if you're in Chicago, San Francisco, New York, mm -hmm. or Toronto, I have logos for all of them uh, <laughs> that I'm happy to share. Um, but uh, I'm Tim McDonald. I am the head of community at homeroom.club. And you can find me on Twitter at TA McDonald or on LinkedIn. I'm Tim A. McDonald. And happy to connect with anybody and almost everybody. I don't say everybody, but almost everybody. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And I'm David Diewald, uh, community manager at Siena. Um, so here's my plug. Uh, we actually are going to start today a small community. It's not a big community. Please don't think of it as a big community around our little show here. Uh, if you're interested in joining that, you can head to our website. And at the top, there's a link right next to blog that says the core. So join our little core community. It's it's not necessarily community for community managers. It's really about the show. Uh, if you go there, you can actually find out what we're going to be talking about, not only next week, but an extended time frame. So you can see three weeks out, four weeks out, what we're going to be talking about. And if you want everybody, you know, if you ever want to come on the show and be a part of it, you can tell us in there. So uh, it's like I said, on our cmgrlive.com website, I'll pop that up there. And uh, in about, uh, well, probably a minute ago, uh, I automatically made it go out to all of our social channels. <laughs> so you can pick it up there. Uh, so, uh, but I want to thank our guests and of course my co-host Tim for joining us today. And thank you to our audience. Let's say we had a bunch of people today. We had Jennifer, we had Rebecca. Um, let's see. I can't yeah, there was a bunch. It was wonderful. Thank you for joining us. Um, if, uh, if please like, and subscribe wherever you are, I appreciate that. It helps us if you would, uh, I'm, my, my text has just scrolled by so fast. I have, I couldn't keep up with it. <laughs> so, I try to make this look professional people. I never succeed. Never and we succeed. thought you had all this memorized in your head, David. <laughs> yeah, no, 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 no. So if you'd like to be a guest on an upcoming episode or topic, join the community first. Um, but if you go to the, the website down in the bottom right, there's a little plug in that'll pop up and you can submit your idea or let us know that you want to be a guest. Um, and then, uh, you know, please, if you would, again, like and subscribe from wherever you are. If you would prefer an audio version of this, you can find our podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Amazon Music, and many more. I prefer Pocket Casts, just saying. Uh, again, thank you to our guests, and thank you for joining us. And we will see you next week where we're going to be talking about the events industry and community. And I'm still looking for guests for that. So if you are in the events community, if you are in the events uh, realm and you're building a community around your events, please let me know. I would love to have you on to talk about it. I, I did it a little bit in the past, but I'm certainly no expert and I would love to have an expert on it. Well, Benny so, is doing the unconference. Yeah. So yeah, it, it can be as small as an unconference. With them. <laughs> yeah, it's an event. It can be, you know, I did it for large scale events, um, you know, with several thousand people building a community around that. But if you've done smaller events, hangouts, meetups, whatever it is, please get in touch with me because I want to understand how you do it. And, I, you know, it's for me, it's going to be a learning experience. And I always love that. So thank you, everybody. We'll catch you next week. Thank you.